regardless if your team blow up this Toronto Raptors roster and trade everybody or team build around this core, keep chugging along the season and see if we can turn things around. Regardless of what camp of Raptors fans you fall into, a couple things just happened which are extremely positive for the Toronto Raptors and could be really big for this team, for this organization going forward. So we're going to dive into that because no, it is not the Toronto Raptors getting a win against a shorthanded subpar team healthy in the NBA in the Charlotte Hornets. The Raptors did pull out a W and frankly, it was ugly. It was not a good win for the Toronto Raptors. The fourth quarter, the second half was good. The first half was pretty ugly. Even parts of the third were kind of messy. You know, the fourth, the Raptors went on a run. We saw Scotty. We saw different players step up and things along those lines. So what is it? Because it's not, you know, I've already seen people in the comment section react and probably already typed up their comments saying, Ben, a win against the Hornets is not a big deal. No, we are not reading into this win. We are not reading into the Raptors completely being turned around after barely beating a completely depleted Charlotte Hornets team. But one thing that is huge, and there are a couple things that we're going to dive into in this game. A couple things that just happened. The first one is Gary Trent Jr. Because our star boy, Gary Trent Jr., he has been struggling to say the least this season. And it's not even like it's a confidence issue, it feels like, at this point from Gary. Because he started to take a few more of those shots that we know Gary's been taking. There was a stretch throughout this season where it felt like Gary Trent Jr. just wasn't really taking the looks that we were sort of hoping for. But he just looked... It didn't even look uncomfortable, but just timid out there on the basketball court. And, you know, at least he started taking a few more of these shots. And now it feels like things have come together a little bit in this game because the confidence matched the open shot sort of making. And Gary Trent Jr. in this one knocked down some, some pretty solid buckets. I mean, he took 17 shots. He played 35 minutes. And that's a part of what we're going to discuss and talk about in this game. But 22 points, 10 rebounds for Gary Trent Jr., three assists and one steal and Gary Trent Jr. if you watch him play he is not a rebounder he's not a guy that gets a bunch of boards or anything along those lines by any means so him being engaged and when Gary Trent Jr. is engaged on the defensive end he has been a high quality defender over his Toronto Raptors career it's just some nights it's not even nights it's like stretches of season stretches of a uh, it can go on for months where Gary just looks engaged on the defensive end or he looks disengaged. And now tonight he was playing D, he was hustling for boards and just looked really into those shots and things that were going on there. And frankly, that's a part of it. Gary Trent Jr. turning around his game. But in combination with that, you know, which could be massive for the Toronto Raptors is look at those minutes discrepancies. We broke down in a video a couple days ago that changes were coming to the lineup and no it wasn't a starting lineup change no it wasn't a shakeup like that it wasn't Malachi Flynn getting thrown at the point guard position it wasn't Precious Achua which people have been roasting me for saying I want Precious at point guard I want maximum chaos from this Raptors team Darko Ryakovic did not come out and make a wild decision like that but there was definitely a change in terms of the rotation the lineup that we saw for this Raptor squad tonight. And if you look at it, it's a trend that's sort of been happening a bit as of late, but Jakob Pertl only played 15 minutes in this one. Four points, two assists, one board. Not real. The Raptors really got cooked on the glass if you watch this game starting off. It was a bad look, but Gary Trent Jr., 35 minutes. And this is something that was on my high horse a bunch with at the start of the season, and then Gary's performance just didn't really back it up, so I quieted myself down a little bit, but... Gary Trent Jr. is a confidence player. He's a guy that needs minutes, and whether or not he's starting or not, he needs to know that he's going to get consistent run, going to get those opportunities in order for him to produce the way that had a lot of Raptors fans excited about his game, you know, especially early on in his Raptors career a couple seasons ago. You know, people were comparing him to Bradley Beal. Riker was on these pods calling him the future Grote. I mean, Gary Trent Jr. was a high promise prospect, and it's, there he still is. He's a young guy that has proven he can score at the NBA level, but he's not a player that does well without inconsistent minutes. And just with, I don't know if it's role defined, because it seemed like his role was defined. He knew what rotation stuff he was getting this season, but I mean, Gary Trent Jr. playing this many minutes, playing this many runs. I know he missed a few shots, seven and nine, uh, nine and seventeen, so efficient for sure. Missed a few open ones that just pop out in my brain as I'm making this video. But 
Gary Trent Jr. playing a lot of the second half, especially over Jakob Pertl, him being able to get into his rhythm, get into the flow of the game more often. I mean, this little shake up to the rotation, and again, Darko Ryakovic, he loves Dennis Schroeder. It's going to be tough for him to pull out Dennis Schroeder from the starting lineup, but this lineup shakeup, this little change that he made really helped the Toronto Raptors in the second half was a nice sort of adjustment that we saw for the Toronto Raptors and could pay dividends going forward because I've been of the proponent, I've been saying, this Raptors team has a lot of talent. We have a lot of good guys and some people have been roasting me in the comments for saying that, but... I, I genuinely believe in Scotty Barnes, the basketball player. I believe in Pascal Siakam, the basketball player. I believe in OG and Anobi, the basketball player. And heck, I've been really impressed with what we've seen from Schroeder over the course of his career, not necessarily the season. I think Gary Trent Jr. is a legitimate scorer in the NBA, and Pirtle can defend elite as a rim protector. He's an elite rim protector. He can finish around the rim, but again, the pieces all have to come together, and Tonight, we also got some production off the bench from other guys. I mean, Precious played solid with 12 points. He's been slowly starting to increase his sort of uh, play over the course of this season. He's returned from injury and stuff along those lines. Boucher had a solid game, even though it was just seven points. Flynn didn't have the greatest night, but we got some production off the bench. I'm still not convinced that we're going to be able to get consistent scoring from everyone outside of Gary and stuff. But I think that this shakeup, this minor change that Darko Ryakovic made to our current rotation, I mean, we need bench scoring, and our bench did outperform the Charlotte Hornets in this one. Again, the Charlotte Hornets were extremely depleted. You know, Ish Smith was still cooking us there at some points in this game, so it's not like uh, this was a huge task to say, hey, this uh, this bench for the Toronto Raptors looked great and stuff along those lines, but giving Gary Trent Jr. more confidence and that and inevitably happening, and then he gets more points, more buckets for this Raptors squad— it's a desperate need for this team. It's something that needs to be fixed. And if we do get consistent production from Gary Trent Jr. off this bench for this Raptor squad going forward, and then we just have one of Boucher, one of Precious, one of Otto Porter Jr., one of Grady Dick, one of anybody have a decent secondary off game off the bench, then, I mean, this Raptors team looks a heck of a lot better. We don't have the record we have. I mean, that's a that's a positive for this team. So regardless of if you're, you know, that's more team compete. That's still where my head's at. I don't want to start the tank here in early December, mid-December, whatever heck time of year it is. But even if you are a team, sort of trade everything and blow it up. I mean, Gary Trent Jr.'s trade value right now is down in the dumps. I mean, we would be lucky to get second round picks for Gary Trent Jr. here at this point. So him playing well, him getting the opportunity to shine and prove what he can do. I mean, it's only going to be a positive for the Toronto Raptors because if you want to make that shake up, then you've proven to other teams that he can still go. He can still perform at a certain level and, you know, maybe he proves to be a valuable piece in your rotation, which is the true end goal for any of these Raptors players playing well. So that's a positive in this one. I don't want to dive, you know, too, too much into an ugly loss against the Charlotte Hornets, but I mean, we, it does have to be talked about. Pascal Siakam has, I don't want to, if I, I don't know if I want to call it a resurgence, but I mean, he has been remarkable for this Raptors team as of late. And frankly, I'm a believer in this Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siakam duo. Call me crazy. Roast me in the comment section. I'm not saying this team doesn't need a shakeup, but Pascal Siakam has proven is a championship proven number two option on a team. And right now, over the last stretch of games, he has been putting up some ridiculous numbers, 27, 8, and 8 in this one tonight. And really just didn't need too many shots. Only 16 shots, made 11 of them. And again, the Hornets defense is... It's not horrible, but it's not great. But uh, he was really able to execute, hit some tough shots, some clutch shots from Pascal Siakam, which was great to see. And then, obviously, our future number one option, the guy it's going to be, I think, still him and him and Scotty are the one A, one B, whatever here at this point in the squad. But Scotty Barnes, twenty two points, seventeen rebounds, seven assists in this game, seven fourteen from the field, hit a three. You know, 7-7 seven seven from the free throw line, which is great to see. I mean, the Raptors shooting 81% from the free throw line is a marvel here at this point. We have been horrific from behind the, the free throw stripe, you know, over the course of this season. So, those guys knocking down their free throws, playing well. Again, we need to see more of these games with the rest of the roster looking good. And... Frankly, if Pascal Siakam's trade market is as bad as it's been, I've always been of the camp this, since this offseason of extend Pascal and figure out the future from there. But especially if the trade packages that are offered to us 
are bad, you know, ahead of this trade deadline. I mean, I believe in this potential sort of duo of Pascal and Scotty Barnes. I think it could work. I think the duo of Scotty and OG could work. I mean, but we do have to make a shakeup. So I'm not of the, you know, complete anti trade anybody. Our team is bad right now. We haven't been able to prove it. Maybe things will be able to be turned around against the Nuggets, the Sixers. We've got some tough games coming up. That's where I'll start to, you know, buy into some of these uh, wins a little bit more often. But again, it's proven on certain nights that Scotty Barnes and Pascal Siakam can excel together, can complement each other, even if Siakam's not the greatest shooter. Scotty has improved on those aspects. But I mean, I like our top top couple guys. I do like that from this team. So let me know what you guys think about this Toronto Raptors squad. Do you think this is a big sort of turning point, especially for Gary Trent Jr.? Let me know in the comment section below. It's best to make this far. Subscribe to the channel. I'm signing out. Cheers.